Dog door. Free car. Ironing. Conjoined twins. Yes, we Hello, Daniel Cummins. Hello, Joe Paisley. Joseph Paisley. Thank you for joining me here on Is We Dumb, episode uh, 67. 67. I just had to look it up real quick. What's your middle name again? Richard. Richard, that's right. Joe Dick. Joey Dick. Joe Dick, Joseph Richard, and Daniel mm-hmm. Brent. What, what, a, what a tag team. What a tag team. What an unthreatening like, WWE pair we would be. Hmm? Joseph Richard <laughs> and Daniel Brent. <laughs> for Scorpion Death <laughs> in Dragon Fire. <laughs> Fuck. It is funny how like you can alter just to take on different persona- personas. Like, like Danny B <laughs> uh, presents a very different picture than Daniel Brent. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> DB. <laughs> DB Jones. Right. DB Cum. <laughs> That would be Danny. Danny B sells you fucking weed <laughs> behind the gas station. Yeah. Daniel Brent does like your taxes. He's in the gas station selling you other like legal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just Daniel a... Brent has a law office a few blocks from the gas station, <laughs> right. D- Dan- arresting Danny B. Danny, yeah, Danny B. I guess now it'd be more like meth. We have to upgrade to meth. <laughs> sure. Not that many people are selling weed behind gas stations anymore. Uh, I have something that I have a. Uh, I have to ask you. Yeah. Um, first of all, I don't know who it is, but someone has signed me up for cat facts. That's so great. Uh, um, but then, did you also know that in ancient Egypt, killing a cat was a crime punishable by death, thanks to for choosing cat facts? <laughs> did you know uh, that? I didn't know that. Huh. It was punishable by death. Yeah. I tried to sign up Lindsay, and I'm so annoyed. She, it never fucking worked. And I, and I, like, I had trouble signing up. Apparently, I'm just too dumb to sign up for cat facts. <laughs> and then I'm pretty sure they're charging me. But it's not giving her any cat facts. Well, they gotta stay in business somehow. Or she just said no. She just thought it was spam, but like, nope. Nope. And then And then just <laughs> shut down my cat facts. In the small text on it, it's like, even if the person says no, you owe us money. You still get charged. Right. Uh, but whoever you are, yeah. I honestly have no idea who it is. Touche. Well well played. Well played. And uh, so I guess it told me in the original text I got, I got a I got a month. I got a month of sweet month ass of cat, cat facts. facts. Multiple cat facts a day <laughs> for a month coming my way. That's awesome. Uh, we have something really cool coming up as a company, yes. and it's the Giving Tree. We've talked about it a little bit. Yeah, just to, just to uh, hit that uh, drum one more time, because uh, it's coming up quick deadline for this. The This year marks the third annual Bad Magic Giving Tree. Over the last three years, we've taken what would be the December Bad Magic donation for a charity and given it back to members of the Bad Magic family. So last year, Lindsay and I offered to match the total amount donated by uh, you amazing you know, bad magicians and meat sacks listening uh, over Eighteen thousand dollars, and then that plus the eleven thousand from Time Sucks Patreon allowed us to give over forty-seven thousand dollars towards holiday gifts for the children of Bad Magic families. Mm. Doing it again this year, gonna uh, match up to fifteen uh, um, k. Lindsay and I, we're, we have at least sixteen k from Patreon that'll come. I think it'll be closer to seventeen. And Dan, uh, sorry, I don't want to yeah. cut you off here. Yeah, uh, myself, Zach, and Logan have decided we're gonna match up to one hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, okay, so that's another four hundred fifty dollars. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Zach's not in it. That's another <laughs> possible three hundred dollars. We could. This could be seventy five dollars. This could be ne- another seventy five dollars. <laughs> so, uh, okay, <laughs> fine. Is Logan in at least? No. Okay. Okay. Okay, bucks. he's in. Okay, he's in. He's in. I'm nope. in too. Then call. All right, fine. Hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> Zach, Zach, and Logan will match up to twenty five dollars. <laughs> um, <laughs> Keep I, going. But I do have a feeling that it's going to end up being close to uh, around fifty thousand dollars, and all of it's going to go God, towards that's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's going to ha- yeah go towards you know making a bunch of kids being like yay oh my god uh, i can't believe the holiday we're having you know for families that otherwise this year for whatever reason just wouldn't be able to provide that without some assistance mm-hmm. and it's you know hanukkah christmas whatever you're celebrating just the holidays accepting nominations uh until november 16th and to be nominated just email giving tree just one word giving tree at badmagicproductions.com with your story why you need a little extra help if you want to give help here's how you do it this year just go to amazon.com Purchase a gift card. When you fill out the box for two, enter the email address, givingtree at badmagicproductions.com, and then, you know, Lindsay and the team will redistribute uh, those Amazon gift cards. Right. And, and we're doing it that way just because they have the most stuff. They tend, with all the shipping delays and everything, to be getting things out the fastest right now. And it was just kind of a nightmare to do uh, individual shopping at a bunch of random places for that many people. I can't even. It's fucking crazy. I blow it when I have one person to shop for. <laughs> I can't imagine, like... Tens and or, <laughs> how many families do we have? Uh, I don't even remember. It was a, a lot, an insane amount. So yeah. I, I suck at shopping for one human. Yeah. Uh, let's just say it's my 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 daughter Pepper's birthday is coming sure. up. It's five days after this episode comes out. Yeah. Still haven't bought shit. So I, yeah. I got to work on that. 
Uh, I can't imagine me being in charge of, of, oh, Lindsay, of something Lin- like this. Lindsay's birthday it's is coming up on crazy. November 11th. Oh, yeah, it's tomorrow. Happy <laughs> birthday, Lindsay. God. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so November 16th, get those things in, and we would love to help you make you know make your holiday better for the family. And if you didn't listen to anything Dan just said, we'll have a link and some more words in the episode description. Perfect. That's the easiest way to do it. It is. Uh, and then, of course, speaking of company-wide things, Bad Magicians... We have a new merch announcement, and this is representing all shows that we have here at Bad Magic Productions. We've got Scared to Death, we've got Time Suck, and of course we've got Is We Dumb, and we've got a challenge coin. That's uh, so cool. I know! So this is uh, available on badmagicmerch.com, or you can go to iswedumb.com, that'll link you over to the merch store. And if you're not familiar with a, what a challenge coin is, uh, it's basically just something that represents whether it's... Uh, I mean, it could be your business. It's kind of evolved into different yeah. things. It could be your platoon, your unit, right. uh, as part of the military. Yeah, it came out of military tradition, mm-hmm. moved into law enforcement quickly, and now like a lot of places use it uh, just to show like, hey, uh, right. we appreciate what you do. Pass it around. It can be used to like last person to slap their challenge coin on the bar has to pay for right. drinks. A, right. a variety of ways. Sure. And then, of course, if you're not passing these things around, it's a way to just uh, show... That you support. Exactly. Bad Magic Productions. All three shows, again, represented. And you can go check that out right now at badmagicproductions.com. Uh, or badmagicmerch.com. Sorry, or go to iswedumb.com. And in case uh, it matters to you, it is two inches. And it's antique nickel, double-sided challenge coin. Uh, but it's it's very nice. But mm-hmm. it is limited quality. So, or quantity. So, yeah. don't. Limited qualities. Wouldn't that it's be a weird quality. merch item? Uh, like, some you of bought, them are nice. Some of them are like some aluminum. Some of them are pieces of shit. Are aluminum. Mm-hmm. Or like just like aluminum foil. Yeah. And we don't you don't know which ones you're gonna get. You could get one out of some like decorative nickel, or <laughs> it could be just kind of like stamped out of like uh, you know, some cow shit. <laughs> right. It's just a thin flake of cow shit that kind of has a loose design feel on it. <laughs> right. It's the weird ass stamp. It's really a crap shit. It's just a lo- like loose uh, <laughs> note piece of paper, just you stamp, and you're like, congratulations, here you go. Challenge coin. It could be a scrap of paper that someone has sloppily written the word challenge coin on. Or it's it laminated, could- but it's laminated. <laughs> so that's got to be worth it, right? <laughs> uh, you ready to get the juices flowing? Yeah. Do you want to talk about your comedy at all? Uh, sure. There's a lot of shit coming up. True. Okay. J- just uh, you can just go to DanCummins.tv to check out uh, you know more tour dates for Symphony of Insanity. We have to update soon here, uh, spring of. Uh, you know, the first half of 2022. But we know we have Tacoma coming up. We have um, Denver coming up, Tampa, and more places. Cities. Still going. There's some cities coming up. <laughs> and so gonna, if you like cities. And they're going to be fun. If you've heard of or live near a city, and you've heard of or like comedy, then you should look into it. <laughs> <laughs> DanCummins.tv. Okay. okay. Now we're going to get the juices Let's fun. do it. Zach! The very super most important starting question. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, this was sent in by Dummy Seth. And get your wiener out. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Would you rather have sex with conjoined twins that share a vagina or conjoined twins at the hip with two separate vaginas? Hmm. Whew. So this is something Ugh. I'm not sure how you answer this. Conjoined? You know, I have honestly thought of... Not, not this. I haven't said. Well, yes, I have. In a roundabout <laughs> Honestly, way. Honestly, I just looked this up yesterday. Did you? No. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, but there was. <laughs> Porno. I don't. Uh, I don't want to <laughs> be mean at all. It's, it's just a a curiosity thing. Right. And I don't remember their names, but there were. It was a show a while back. It might. It might have been on like uh, TLC, and it was. Uh, they were like they would do country songs and stuff. Like they I would remember sing. that. I, do you remember mm-hmm. it was these two women that were conjoined somewhere in their torsos, but it was a thing. And, and then there was, I talked about it on the PT Barnum episode of uh, times like Chang and Eng, I believe were their names, but they were like, they lived for a long time. These, these Chinese, uh, or from Taiwan, I think it might've been Taiwanese or Siam. I don't know. So right. in, in somewhere in Indochina. And they were conjoined at, uh, somewhere in the hip ish area. And then, and they had, yeah, they had kids. Like they had separate wives, and and it was a weird thing where like they would have to like one the guy would have to go to, or the deal they worked out was okay. He would the two men would spend three nights in a row, say at wife A's house, hmm. and then they'd spend the next three nights at wife B's house, and then they never said because you know people didn't disclose those details back. This was a while, like hundred years ago or so. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I, I just wondered, like, well, how was there like a curtain drawn so the one dude is just on the other side of the curtain listening to his brother fuck? Inches away, <laughs> or or do they just fuck it? The curtain silly, just like close your eyes, <laughs> or does he watch? You got to be a professional zoner outer, <laughs> right? Right. Like you you've got to be able to daydream like a motherfucker. And these guys had separate dicks, so it was like, is this guy like got a fucking raging boner, 
while his brother's like dick is getting some action. Like like her legs are probably bumping up against his dick. Mm. Is she reaching over for a handy sometimes? Like what is kind she, of shit's she going on? She's sticking in a ski pole type thing. <laughs> right, right. Ski pole on the side. Hit she, the got a, she got a fucking joystick. <laughs> she's she's shifting. She got a gear shifter. It's she's on, shifting into third. It's honestly, it's just a grip at that point. It's a grip. It's uh, it's a love handle. How good? At, it's an extra dick that's a love handle. At that how point. how good at multitasking is she? Can she <laughs> thrust at one rhythm yeah. and jerk him at another, or just it doesn't matter? Just jerk at the same rhythm. <laughs> See, you're, there you go. Do they come at the same time? Mm-hmm. There's so many thoughts. That's one thing to think about. Right. <laughs> I know it's so weird to uh how do you how do you zone that out and then if you're on the yeah. other side so let's not say that it's you and your brother but in this case right. again you can flip this however you want depending on your sexual orientation sure 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 but for me like trying to have sex with <laughs> one yeah of them yeah while the other is right there mm-hmm. i don't know how you would do that I, i'm I, i'm too easily distracted yeah i mean what if she okay what if the other like conjoined at the hip two separate vaginas mm-hmm. one's a hype man <laughs> that's dope that's pretty sweet. That is, that's best case mm-hmm. scenario. Okay. Okay. Doing, doing great. Doing great. Fuck yeah, bro. Doing great. And then eventually, <laughs> just doing great. It's probably the best she's ever had. And then eventually, like, please hurry the fuck up. Right. I'm exhausted. I oh have my a God, busy day at work. Please. Please just fucking finish Would this you shit. please I'm come? Trying. Would you please come? <laughs> come, come on, finish. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Ugh. How much have you been drinking? Johnny used to fuck her so much harder than that. Well, you see, now she that's her fault. Right? Because now you're gonna last longer. It's gonna be the, then she's gonna have to sit there through a fight. God. That's all, that's her fault. Yeah, what if what if the sister that's a weird thing, like what if the other other, you know, sis, Siamese sister hated you? <laughs> you know, and, and would just like throw weird shit in she while had you're having some, sex. She had some like blackmail on you. Mm-hmm. Oh, that'd be uncomfortable. What if what if like she knows you don't like being touched? What if like when you're about to come, she sneaks finger in your ass? Mm. And then you're like, God! Damn it, Susan. <laughs> she laughs. Stop. She's like, ha ha, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Whatever you're dumb. Flips <laughs> right, you off. Right. The whole time, w- whole time, just finger in your face, just flipping you off. <laughs> God damn it. I hate this. I hate this so much. Uh, uh, yeah. But, so, so options, very God, limited with that. so complicated. And here's, I know, whatever, as crude as this is, mm-hmm. uh, we have to think about how hard it is to like just even last a, a decent amount of time with one vagina. Mm-hmm. So you put two in the mix. Ugh. It's got to be. I'm not sure the math on that. Yeah, but I'm. I'm probably. I'm. I'm it's three worse. Right. That's gonna. It'll be like if I was thirty seconds before now I'm fifteen. So that is God. something I'm gonna have to consider. Um, it's also a lot of cardio. I mean, a lot of cardio. Can be good shape. Yeah. It is, but that's also hard work. So true. I think. I think you gotta like, man. <laughs> you gotta. You gotta date both of them. There's got. This has got to be a weird sister wife situation. There's got to mm-hmm. be two wives. This is. This is when polygamy should be allowed. Mm. Where it's like, listen, normally polygamy by default. Polygamy by default. It's like right. normally, okay, whatever. Our state's not a fan of polygamy, but there's no better way to handle the situation. Right. Like we can't. It's so hard. It's so co- it's so extra complicated <laughs> to involve two dudes. God, he's have to hope their personalities are pretty close. Yeah, and then they have to agree. They're like, okay, we got to find a guy that we both like. <laughs> oh boy. Because because it's just so uncomfortable. For the person, the third person, to be fucking one person, while well, like the other person is always right there, mm-hmm. like and like, let's say the vaginas are not, it's not, they're not sharing a vagina, they're separate. Vagina. Yeah, but that other vagina is no more than what, twelve inches away, <laughs> fourteen inches away. On a good like, day, like I don't, know. your your hand slips and you're fingering your sister in law, mm-hmm. right? Mm. I mean. <laughs> Like you're, it's just a natural resting spot to put your hand on your sister in law's butt on her butthole. Gotcha. Like when you're doggy styling I your it. wife. I get it. It's. I never even thought about doggy style. Now I am, and it's weird me out even more. Mm-hmm. So I, th- I think that's fun. I think you get you got to do a little swaparoo, and then and then and then and then, it's, and then maybe if you okay, best case scenario that works out the nicest for everyone. Mm-hmm. You're a very athletic lover, the guy. And everyone's uh, revved up and ready to go. And then you just kind of get like a, a seesaw motion where you're like, boop, and then you're in one vagina, and then you pop a, out. B, boop, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. A, B, gotcha. a, B. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you work a little slap on B when you're in A, mm-hmm. and then you slap on A when you're in B. And then, you know, you, you could get some kind of rhythm down. It's like a weird where, game of Twister. <laughs> it's It takes some effort. <laughs> left takes hand, some focus. Left hand, right vagina. <laughs> <laughs> right foot <but> blue. <laughs> but what would be the worst case scenario is if they if they shared yeah if they shared a vagina <sighs> but one of them wasn't. Is like, that polygamy? I, I don't know. Oh, check this out. Oh, hold on. Share. Okay, you should finish your. Okay, that. No, I'll, I'll, I'll hold mine. One of them is it loves what you're doing. Yeah. Other one doesn't care for it. Right. And that's gonna be a problem. 
One is bored out of their mind. Other one, n- endless orgasms. Right. That's a that's a that's a hard obstacle to overcome. Oh my god. One wishes you would stop. One wishes you'd never stop. Right. That's tough. I, my thought was basically yours, but worse. It was the <laughs> same along the same lines yeah. of what if like you like like the weirdest rape charges. Oh, we're, boy. we're like one. One is like fuck yeah, fuck that pussy. Uh-huh. And then and then but then halfway through that one's like, well, I didn't say you could. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh my god! And then you have like this weird court case where the two like they have to testify <laughs> one at a time, one, one, <laughs> one at a time. And one head's like, no, I wanted that dick in this pussy. <laughs> like, I got, I was begging for that dick. And then the other one's like, I didn't <laughs> want the dick in the pussy. Yeah, but it's my pussy too. Uh-huh. You don't own this pussy. Well, neither do you. Mm. And then like, and then you get like the weirdest charge of like half rape. <laughs> what? You get a 50% rape charge. You have to have like your, uh, again, back to Twister. Half right. of you is in jail and half of you is out. And you have to sit, you have to sit between the, the jail cell door. <laughs> left, uh, left, left foot jail, right foot free. That's the weird sentence there where it's like you're incarcerated. Okay, you, you're going to prison for eight years, <laughs> but you only have to spend from midnight to noon in right. your cell. And then from noon, from 1201 to midnight, do what you want. Free man. You're a free man. We'll mm-hmm. let you out. You got to come back. And you kind of like it's a weird half seat situation. <laughs> right. <laughs> or maybe when you're in there, maybe maybe the women decide territory. They're like, okay, I'm the, pri- oh, zones. I'm, I'm the primary clit owner, mm. but you get the vaginal canal. But only on Tuesdays. Or maybe that's what it is. It's, it's switched back and forth. You have to pay attention to what day of the week is. Mondays, <laughs> Wednesdays, and Fridays, I get that pussy. <laughs> And then you get it Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and then it's just a split custody. And then yeah, like a joint joint custody. And then like the ones like can't fucking stand this guy. Oh but, man! But she's in there, just like nope, I'm not gonna enjoy it. I'm not gonna enjoy it. I'm not gonna enjoy it. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Or maybe yeah, maybe you. I don't know. Switch switch your roosies. It, it might make it more complicated if like on Tuesdays you get the vagina, but your sister gets the butthole. <laughs> and then <laughs> then you gotta agree <laughs> for that. Ah, uh, so, so many things. Yeah. The, the only bonus of uh-huh. any of this would be if, like, you're on the side and you're having a topic, like, hey, bro, how many threesomes you had? You're like, every single time. It's like, nothing but. <laughs> nothing but threesomes. What do you mean? <laughs> and he's like, they never really explain it. I'm sick of threesomes. <laughs> I'm sick of it. I wish. It's not as cool as you think. I can't even remember what it's like to fuck just one girl. <laughs> right? <laughs> how many you had? I don't know, 2,000? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like this, I don't know back, how long I've been married. Way back, 15 years? <laughs> way back in college? No. no. Every day. Every day. Every day it's a threesome and they're fucking killing me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. Um, man, I think, I think I would rather... I think it would be a little bit less complicated to have two vaginas. I'm in. Okay. Yep. Just sharing the middle share grounds. The middle, that seems... <laughs> Dude, it's a disaster. <laughs> disaster. <laughs> <laughs> they both have to love you. Or they both have to fucking hate you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you just figure it out from there. <laughs> Bingo. What a world. <laughs> what a world. I mean, uh, okay, we're going to move on to um, okay. excuse me. Sounds good. And in case no one knows what that is, I'll explain it in a second. Zach! Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, excuse me. So we've done this a hand... Yep. I'm you sorry. rang? I rang? We've done this a handful of times, but um, excuse me, is what we basically save things that are just overall, in general, mm-hmm. dumb. Mm-hmm. Or we as a humanity, as a collective, do that drives us insane. And this particular um, excuse me, is something that I have been thinking about since high school. I remember being drunk at a dinner table. I was sitting at my friend's Matt, uh, my friend Matt house, uh, Matt's house. Matt's house. <sighs> and reading the back of like a Budweiser bottle. Yeah. And then just started laughing. I was probably high too. <laughs> I, laughing at how absurd this was. And then I haven't been able to block it out ever since then. And what yeah. I'm talking about right now is the back, the warning label on alcoholic beverages. So if you look at warning labels on, I don't know, everything else, it does not have this certain word and phrasing uh, that is passing the blame off. Like, they, like they're like, nope, not our problem. <laughs> so the back of alcoholic beverages uh, here in the United States, yeah. it says government warning. Number one, according to the Surgeon General... Women should not drink alcoholic beverages during pregnancy because of the risk of birth defects. Yep. So the problem <laughs> weird, I have with this weird wording is according to the Surgeon General, mm-hmm. like they're saying, according to my fucking neighbor, I've right. never, I've never had a problem with this. Listen, I've had fifteen kids, all fine, mm-hmm. all great. 
Wife was drunk the whole time. It, it so is, it's not yeah. according to me. It's according to Surgeon General. Thank you very much. It is a weird. It, it is weird phrasing, mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it does make it sound like the, um, the alcohol company doesn't agree. <laughs> right. Where it's like, listen, we think this is fine. <laughs> listen, <laughs> we've always thought this was fine. It, it feels. It feels like a whisper. Mm -hmm. Like you're gonna be fine. <laughs> Do whatever you fuck you want. Mm -hmm. According to the Surgeon General, <laughs> some bad shit might happen. But we know that's not true. <laughs> like, yeah, it does feel like listen, a weird... you wanna, you, Listen, you want to play the odds? Play, play the, the odds. odds. Play the odds. Come on. What? It's the Surgeon General. Do you know... Who is that? Do you know who he is? <laughs> no. Then why are you listening to him? People have been drinking when they're pregnant for hundreds of years. Mm, thousands. Thousands and thousands of years. Uh -huh. And most people are fine. <laughs> I mean, come on, roll the dice. Roll the dice. Roll the dice. You're probably going to be good. Uh, and I don't know what lobbying had to mm -hmm. take place uh, to get the yeah. word according, according to this yeah, guy. Yeah. Because you look at tobacco products and the front end says like, uh, I think it says Surgeon General Warning. And then it just says what it and is. And then it says, don't fucking smoke yeah. this. Do not smoke during, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it says, bad idea, mm -hmm. don't do it. But then alcohol's like, Peh. There's there's some there's a uh, a shaky ground here. The folks at uh, An Anheuser Busch, uh -huh. uh, they were able to grease enough palms for like, nah, listen, let's, uh, well, <laughs> come on. why do we have to be so harsh? Come on, just uh, according to him, you know, according <laughs> to this guy, sure we get that, but not to us. <laughs> Why do you have to put our... And they, yeah, and they, they gave him you? enough money. Does he love you like we love you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what's so weird about it. They gave, I, they gave him enough... Uh, th there is that crazy thing. Uh, I love this with politicians. People talk about, yeah, politicians, you know, some some people will say, like, they don't make that much when they're in office. And, mm -hmm. and they don't. And they're not necessarily bribed. But what I love, uh, this basic bribe that happens every, just fucking constantly. Probably just happened right now. Pr probably happening right now, mm -hmm. today, is like... We're not going to bribe you, but we are going to pay you two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to have lunch with us when this is all over. Right? It, it, it's like get the f that's a fucking bribe. <laughs> that's what a bribe is. Listen, you're, we're you're not just, trying to bribe you, but if you do what we want, what we right. say, we won't kill your family. <laughs> but come on, we're not we're not bribe. We're not. Listen, that's not a threat. I'm not. <laughs> it's not. We're not. We said we could. We, I'm not going to give we you. We might kill your family. I'm not going to give you a million dollars to say according to. But if you do phrase it that way, I am going to. You know, pay you a million dollars to say hi to me and my family on Tuesday. You know that mansion you wanted? We're going to buy it for you. We're going to buy you, it for you. You, you just have to show up and cut a ribbon. We don't even know what it's for. <laughs> and then we'll just sign the memo ribbon cutting ceremony, and then everybody fucking wins. We're just nice guys. We're just nice guys <laughs> who overpay for ribbon cutting ceremony. That's not, it's not a crime to overpay. Those big scissors are expensive. Listen, my kid made a cool <laughs> Lego sculpture. I'm going to sell it to you for $3 million. <laughs> I'm not going to bribe you, but you're going to get this Lego Jeep uh -huh. for three. Uh, you, actually, I'm going to give it to you. You're going to sell it back to me for $3 million. Listen, and that's how we're going to figure this listen, out. Listen, next Saturday, mm -hmm. as long as you put in according to certain general and the thing, uh, my son's going to be out front selling rocks uh, in, our, in our lawn. Mm -hmm. Come by. You buy a rock. I'll give you $100 million. Yeah, you buy it for a dollar. <laughs> right. I'll be like, oh, my God, I need that rock. Refuse to sell it to me for anything less than $100 million. <laughs> And that, that's business, baby. That, that's just business. That's business, baby. Showbiz. It's fucking showbiz, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I imagine having, yeah. according to Surgeon General, yeah. on other warnings, right. uh, like it bleach. <laughs> according to Tom. According to according to the Surgeon General, kids shouldn't drink it. Right. It's like, nah, just that that's scrapped. That's, they don't have that on there. Why is it on alcoholic beverages? I would love it if uh, on the warning, it, it, right after the first sentence of, according to the Surgeon General, you know, bleach is bad for children to exist, uh, ingest. <laughs> And, 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 and then they just have like, okay, and they actually have the little emoji <laughs> right. of a dude throwing his hands up. You okay. tell me. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I was like the eyeballs that are looking sideways, like, okay. <laughs> we don't want to tell you how to live your life, but according to the Surgeon General. You know we wouldn't tell you how to live your life, but according to the Surgeon General. I wish there was an emoji for air quotes. <laughs> according to, to the Surgeon General, <laughs> this is bad for it's you. It's italicized <laughs> right, with right. an eye roll emoji. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. That's basically what it is. Yes. And that's why it's always made me laugh. The emoji loophole would be great. <laughs> if, like, you get through the warning, but you can throw in as many emojis as you want. Right. <laughs> and it is just, according to the Surgeon General, and then just uh, eye roll, and then eggplant, and then fucking rain. <laughs> right. Just like, ah, jerking off. <laughs> according to the Surgeon General, <laughs> has, like, parentheses. <laughs> parentheses, and it just has, like, the, it has, like, the eye roll. And it's like, <laughs> it just says, <laughs> <laughs> like, d bitch, please. <laughs> right. <laughs> this bitch. According to this asshole. According to the, and then poop emoji, <laughs> right. and, then, and then Surgeon General. 
And then like flies or something. <laughs> cry, cry, laugh, cry, laugh. <laughs> uh, and then the next one, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it says consumption of alcoholic beverages impairs your ability to drive a car or operate machinery. Okay. And may, ca- may cause health problems. All of that is true. Mm-hmm. So let's just take it. Let's, let's take out take- the weird front part. I, I was um, proud of myself for being able to focus on what you were talking about in this segment because I can't stop thinking about the seesaw end A, end B, end A, end B. <laughs> got a hand on A, got a penis in B, left got a it. penis in A, got a hand on B. <laughs> left, left it green. Right dig blue. <laughs> <laughs> Spinning the little... That'd be a fun game. That would be. That would be a fun way. Like, uh, I'm sure they... They have sexy twister, don't they? They have to. Ah, they, I'm tongue, sure they do. Left tongue or just... Oh, probably, I bet they do. Tongue I bet they on do. ear. And you just flip it. Mm-hmm. Or dice or some. That'd be a fun game to play with some uh, conjoined twins. Yeah. As long as they have to both want to play. Exactly. Of course. <laughs> Again, here we are. Back in jail. Here we are. Back in, <laughs> back in jail for half the time. <laughs> uh, okay. So we're doing who the what fuck today. Yeah. And we're going to do that right now if you're ready. I'm ready. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? This is just a, a weird story. It's, um, <laughs> I mean, I'll explain here in a little bit, but it reminds me of, uh, of some other stories I couldn't quite pin down where the boss or yeah. the owner of a company okay. had some sort of promotional idea, but was completely toned deaf to whether society is going to like it or not. Okay, okay. You know that type of thing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I do. Um, like something reminds me of, uh, oh man, what was that? It was over, uh, it was in the Secret Suck, which is the Patreon-only thing yeah. we do for Time Suck, uh, where listeners said, like, the school wanted to teach you about segregation. So they like made people dress up, like, yes. dress up in certain shirts, right? It's like, guys. Right. Yeah, and, and they had like some kids, kids <laughs> right. dress up as uh, uh, the African American kids, right? Were, and, and then like were mean to them, yeah. And like them out of class, mm-hmm. would not go to the bathroom. And it's like okay, right. it's your like, heart's in the right place, but I don't. This is not good for the kids. <laughs> Poor execution. Yeah, real bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, not quite that bad, but plastic surgeon in South Korea faces fine for making towers out of out of jawbone shards. Okay, <laughs> where, my just quite, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Those are big towers. <laughs> yeah. Where I just wonder, like, where did he get so many jawbones? Because he got them out of people's faces. Because he's a plastic surgeon. Oh, <laughs> da, 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 da. okay, okay, Ready? okay. When he's shaving people's jaws. Yep. So a South Korean plastic surgeon faces a fine after building bone towers in his uh, Gangnam District clinic filled with jawbone shards from hundreds of patients. That's pretty creepy. These sixty centimeter glass structures were filled with jawbone parts removed during surgery, said an official of the Gangnam District offer in Seoul. The clinic specializes in jaw procedures, which are very popular in South Korea, especially among women aspiring to, or aspiring to a thinner facial look with a V-shaped uh. chin. So a photo of the towers posted on the clinic's website was removed after it went viral on the internet during a storm of online criticism. He just has a couple people that tw- uh, sent us some tweets. Who find him? This is the, this is the most disgusting, uh, this is the most gross, disgusting, disgusting image I've seen in recent memory. Uh, someone tweeted out, a local official said, uh, you know, they, they looked at the regulations mm-hmm. requiring the disposal of, ah, of the body parts. Gotcha. And obviously, you can't just okay. put them on display. Yeah. Uh, they visited. They had a, a fine that was given out. It was 3 million won, which is $3,170, which is not, you know, that crazy. I'm guessing you're making Good. more than that as a plastic surgeon. Uh, yeah. But it's just so funny because you know, you yeah. know the boss or the owner of Ugh, this clinic. Just gross. They had to have gone out to like an after... After mm-hmm. business, uh, business thing at the bar. Yeah. And they were hammered drunk. Like, what the fuck are you doing all the jaw bones, man? Right. Uh, I don't know. I put them in a big old case. All right. Where? Right in front. They let people see them. What's the big right. problem? Like, what else are we going to do? You don't need them. <laughs> yeah. And they just decided to build a giant tower out of fucking jaw bones. Now, I, now I don't think, I mean, in different countries, I think the government fine is weird. I get the <laughs> disposal, but they're not dead bodies. Sure. It's from the living. Because there was that weird thing where it's like, okay, if I cut my finger off and I want to fucking, uh, I don't know, somehow preserve it. Okay. And, and then I want to like have it in my lobby of a business. This is my finger. Here's my little finger display. Mm. I should get to because it's my finger. <laughs> right. Sure. And, and, or, or if somebody, if I have a business where I take people's fingers, <laughs> I don't even know what that business would be. I have a finger removal service. If you have uh, a problem finger, you fucking, we come, we cut it off. It's like a payday loan, but fingertips. Ooh, payday loan. Mm-hmm. But, yep. Then I should get to do it, do with what I wish to those fingers. Mm. It's just in poor taste with the customers. That's where it's like, I feel like you uh, are going to get, get in trouble. Like, mm. like, it, your customers are going to be creeped out, probably, if they find out you have a weird a fucking pyramid kind of tower made out of jawbone fragments. You, <laughs> you might lose some business, and that's where you get punished. Sure. The fine part's weird to me, but that but that, that is just a weird thing to do, because it makes me think about, like, other medical places. <laughs> that's all I can think about. Like, I, I, just keep, I, I keep picturing a fish tank full of fucking tumors. <laughs> Liposuction. 
<laughs> just just fat towers. Oh my god. Just white oh my god. fat blobs. Like little bubble machine, mm-hmm. like the bubbles go through it too. Like maybe some fish swimming around. Right. Just a whole tower of, of, of liposuction fat. Uh, or amp- like what if you had you know, amputated limbs? Right. You just put them in a fish tank. That's a fun way to and, get in. And that'd be a weird thing where I wonder if the jawbone, I mean, uh, fragment owner should have to like sign a waiver. Boob jobs. Boob jobs. Oh my God. <laughs> Hysterectomy. You just put a bunch of cut off oh, boobs in the tower. Uter- uteruses. Like, See in, where in this the is tower. going? Mm-hmm. <laughs> or if somebody had a double mastectomy, you just fucking put their boobs on like a, on a framed thing on the wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I guess my like, office. yeah, that, that is a weird thing where like the bone fragment I guess I wasn't really thinking of as far as ownership, but if you take that further, it gets real weird. Yeah. Like those people should have to sign off. Like you can use my bone fragment in a weird display Mm -hmm. if you want to, because yeah, if you take it a little further and like, what if you had one of your balls removed and then you go back to that office, you know, uh, six months later and then your fucking balls on a plaque on the wall. Foreskin. Your foreskin. Mm -hmm. Foreskin. It's made into a a fucking uh, baseball glove. Right, yeah, there's a baseball glove at your doctor's office and part of the glove, <laughs> part of the fucking thumb part is your son's foreskin. And you're like, I didn't agree to this. And, you just, and, the, and the people that work in there are just playing catch with it. Oh my God. Like whipping around a ball that's made out of foreskin and then a baseball glove that's made out of foreskin. And that's just their, that's their pride and joy. That's how you get in. You can't go back and, and get your procedure done until you can throw a strike. Oh my God. With foreskin baseball. You know like the little field goal thing <laughs> you'll do? This is why I'm not a doctor. <laughs> you know like the field goal thing you're doing table? table oh yeah, you're, like kicking this, the yeah. sugar packet? Mm-hmm. You, yeah, somebody kicked the sugar packet. You know, mm-hmm. the, I was picturing like, and then there's like the like the rubber band. You can like <laughs> shoot rubber bands as a kid, but some game where they've come up with in the lobby where you shoot rubber bands through little targets <laughs> and then you find out the rubber bands are just kids' foreskins. Right. That they've taken out. You're like, ah, I, don't, I don't like this. Well treated. Well treated. Oh my god, they actually do write the name. <laughs> oh no! You, you go and you see your fucking kids' foreskin. Some just... are big, some are small. <laughs> like just different size rubber bands. Why is it? Why are they different sizes? Well, well, <laughs> genetics. We're all, we're all the same. That's that's why. So yeah, it is, yeah, the, the jawbone thing is weird. It is weird. I uh, I mean, again, like I don't know if I was going in if I'd be weirded out by it because yeah. I might be. It was tastefully done, it, right? It but was. Not, tastefully we're not done. in a fucking museum. True. <laughs> we're, at a, we're at a clinic that's ripping jawbones out. True. So it is a little, um, little gross. To him, he doesn't give a fuck. He sees it every day. He cuts jaws apart with saws, and that's how he makes a living. Everybody Ugh. else is like, eh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. I much care for that. I'm always so torn on plastic surgery anyway, where it's that thing of like, if it, if it makes you feel better, fine. Sure. But I just noticed that so many people, once they start that fucking heading down that path, right? Then they just like changing this, changing this, changing, and the, and they don't seem happier. Mm-hmm. Some people, I'm sure, are, but a lot of people, I'm like, oh, you just just be happy with how you look. Yeah, make your peace. Yeah, with how you look. Yeah. Uh, if, if there's something, if there's one thing that's been really bugging you, okay. But a lot of people, when they're going for that perfection, and they just, it just makes me sad mm. when I think about all these all these women getting their like jawbone shaved. It's like, or you just be happy with how your jaw is mm-hmm. instead of following some weird facial shape trend. But if they got oh, that sad, maybe I'd love them. I think that's what they're going for. Like, like, sure, maybe the one guy you're with will love you. Mm. Everyone else, though? But do you need everybody else? That's up to you. Right. It's up to you. I mean, how how beautiful do you want to be? <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Were you starting to feel mean? Yeah, I was. I, and I, I had to back out. Uh, I, the, the number one thing I hear as yeah. far as plastic surgery goes is getting a boob job, like, after mm-hmm. you have kids. Yes. Uh, which, I mean, just given yeah. whatever my circle of friends is, mm-hmm. like, I just don't like rest- them at my belly button. Right, right. Exactly. Like, that's exactly. really what it is. Makes sense to me. You want to yeah. restore your confidence or whatever. Yeah, no, there are, like, healthy ways to do it for sure. As opposed to some people are like, oh, I want a little bit of this, and then I'm going to get a little bit of that, and then I'm going to get this, and then this injection, and then this shaving, and then this, and this, like, reconstruction. New teeth, like, new eyes. Right. And it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's just, what are you doing? Hit the brakes. Yeah, hit the brakes. But we promise you, if you keep going, it's going to be worse. Right. Well, that, Every single person you try to impress is oh going to be gosh. like, gosh, that's too far. That's that's what would worry me, I think, about. <laughs> no was, one's like, oh. good, perfect. That is <laughs> that is perfect. Everybody sees her and they're like, you did too much. I mean, only because she's not listening to the show. Oh, boy. I would feel comfortable. There's no fucking way. This is going to get back to her. <laughs> okay. There's no fucking way. And the way. next thing you say is about Lindsay? No. Like, no, just, no. just like, like super, like, oh bro, that's God. like zero separation. <laughs> no. I, I, she will I, never hear this. I was thinking about it and I've heard other people talk about this. And she, listen, she's beautiful. She's very successful. She's everything. But it does make me a little sad to see some of the work that Nicole Kidman has had done. Mm. Where I'm just like, your face is frozen. <laughs> and you were always so pretty but it's like and I, and I think that comes from this pressure of like um, you know maybe you're 50 and, you, and, and you're in an industry where you want to look youthful right but then I think about like Diane Keaton and I think about like uh, Sissy Spacek and, and these women who, who aged more naturally I don't I'm not good enough to understand when people have had work done to know maybe they did have some but clearly not much if they did and they just like yeah there's an older version like they look older because you're supposed to look older <laughs> that's how it works that's how it works <laughs> 
right? I don't know. I've just, I've just, I've just always one of those people. I'm like, yeah, I look older. I look very different than I did when I was 22. I'm supposed to It'd be fucking weird. <laughs> That's how it goes. If people are like, oh my god, you look exactly like you did at 22. Like, what am I <gasps> fucking mortal? Yikes! That'd be great. I hope I don't. Some fucking weird curse. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, okay, you ready know. for our next story? Yeah, I was just, I, I was just trying to be pot. I don't want to make anybody feel bad who got work done. I just want you to love yourself. Exactly. I, and I'm there too. I'm, I'm there just too. Make, just make sure you, you're yourself. thinking it out. Make it, yeah. make, think it out. Yeah. Think it out. Don't keep going forever. Yeah. It's, it's going to get bad. Uh, this story is uh, on who the what fuck because there's not really any dumb here. Yeah. Uh, it's almost some some signs of genius. Okay. So men take vehicle with free car sign. Later, find a body in the trunk. <laughs> Whoa. A body. <laughs> Can you imagine? No. Uh, so hopefully I'm not pronouncing some of this wrong. I looked it up, but I it was different pronunciations. Also, that's so fucking uh, <laughs> darkly. I mean, it's really fucked up. Yeah. But darkly hilarious to like you kill somebody. Mm. You put their body in the trunk and then you just put a sign in the car that says free car. Right. And you just hope somebody's dumb enough to be like, oh, I want a free car. <laughs> right. And they just take it. And then these they guys did. did. They did. <laughs> and it fucking worked. Right. Pretty fucking and then, smart. And now their prints are all over the fucking dead body car. <laughs> right. I don't even like, I don't really oh have God. to read this story. Like there, you really know what is happening, but I'll read some of it here. Uh, it says, according to Kapoa or Kapaya County Sheriff Byron Swilly, a body was found inside a vehicle in Kapaya County. So Sheriff Swilly, which is pretty That's funny. Great name. name. <laughs> Who's taking him seriously though? Sheriff, Sheriff Swilly. Officer Swilly. I hope his first name is Willie. <laughs> it's Willie Swilly. Willie Swilly. <laughs> <laughs> Will he slay vanilla jelly? <laughs> Here. Here. <laughs> Middle name Vanilli. <laughs> Said a man drove the vehicle from Byram to Kapaya County, but realized that there was a body inside the vehicle's trunk. <laughs> so coroner Ellis Stewart said two men found the car in Byram with a free car sign on it with the key inside. They oh, drove the car to Kapaya boy. County and looked inside after arriving at a family member's home. I love that they don't even look inside when they like first get the car. <laughs> well, I mean... If you're just grabbing a free car I guess off the gonna, side of the road, you're not check look, the trunk. How, how's the trunk space? Hey, you're probably just going to drive well, the car. Well, wouldn't you want to at least look in the... I, 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 guess, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't just, know if I would. I just think like so many alarm bells would go off if I'm going along and I see like a sign that says free car. Right. And the keys are still in the ignition. <laughs> you, you think it was I'm stolen. I'm going to be like, this isn't right. I would think it was stolen. Right. I wouldn't think there's a dead body in the trunk. Okay. Yeah. Like I would be yeah. like, ah, oh, I shouldn't take this because it's fucking stolen. And someone's getting rid of it because it's hot and the police are on your trail. <laughs> right. You're right. <laughs> so, like, just fucking get rid of it. Um, maybe these guys were, maybe they're just part of that same realm. Like, fine, I know yeah. we can take this to get it chopped up real quick. It's just down the block. This is that classic, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Mm -hmm. This is such a great <laughs> example of that. <laughs> Or these guys, like there's there's multiple levels of genius. What if they were the ones that put free sign in it just so they had like an alibi? That's funny. <laughs> but then I guess you trace it back to like, well, I guess if they stole it, uh -huh. if they stole, that's pretty funny. Okay, you steal the car. I mean, this isn't funny now that I'm saying it. It's, 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 it's funny because it's now, this not is happening. hilarious. This is hilarious. You kill somebody. <laughs> This is hilarious. Listen to this funny story I have. You kill somebody who doesn't deserve it. <laughs> but wait, it gets better. Wait, it gets better. <laughs> After you kill this person and their family's upset, you don't care because you're not them. You put their body. Hold on, hear me out. Hold on, hear me out. You put their dead body. In your you put a dead human body, someone who had a family and friends. You take their dead human body and you put it in the trunk of your car. And uh -huh. a car that you've stolen. Right. And then you put free car sign on it and you, and you let it sit, sit by the road for, I don't know, 20 minutes. Sure. Or maybe maybe in a day. A day. Let a few people drive by. But stay close so you can run and grab it if someone tries to get it before you do. Uh -huh. And then you get it and you're like, oh my God, free car. And then you report to the police, I can't believe I found this free car. And you just don't tell them that you stole it and you killed them. <laughs> that's so funny. That's a, that's a funny honk, honk. I have a I have a button for that. That's... That's a good comedy story. What about, that's great. <laughs> well, that's so funny. All right, but it says here, it just goes on and talks to the people that, you know, took the car. Mm -hmm. It says, I never stopped and looked or anything, but I knew it was kind of unusual, Peacock said. I figured somebody was driving down here to sell it. We buy a bunch of cars. I figured somebody was driving down to sell it uh, and it quit on them or something. Just never dawned on me that something like that went on. <laughs> So and, and did you, you and did you introduce Mr. Peacock? No, it's just the manager, the manager of Stars Auto Sales, manager which of is stars. junkyard in in, in uh, Arrington or er, yeah, Arrington. Stars. To as, uh, Dan Peacock. That's another good name. <laughs> yeah. we, we got we got Sheriff Swilly, uh -huh. and then we got Mr. Peacock, <laughs> manager of Stars Auto Sales. Is this a is this a kids book? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we got Officer Willie Vanilli Nilly Swilly. <laughs> it does feel like a kid's book. Uh -huh. And they took the dead body to Mr. Peacock's house. <laughs> Mr. Peacock's house. Sounds like a game of Clue now. And went down to the whale, uh, Mr. Whale's, Mrs. Whale's house. <laughs> Suspects include Mr. Plum. <laughs> right. Mrs. White. 
Yeah. Uh, they did recognize the body because of tattoos and, and all that kind of stuff. But this got me thinking mm-hmm. uh, just about that that side of it where just giving away stuff for free on the side of the road. Yeah. Like if uh, you're going down the street and you see a free washer and dryer. Yeah. I mean, I would expect it to a degree. I would look around and make sure it was okay. Yeah. But like I wouldn't like pull the drum out. Right. Mm. So what if I just like hid some uh, some damning evidence in that, and then somebody just fucking haul it off for me? I mean, really, it sounds like we've come up with a good idea to help get away with crimes. Mm-hmm. Is, kill, is you hide bodies, kill Zach. We'll, we'll, we'll test with Zach. Okay. Okay, we'll kill Zach. Uh-huh. Just for the funsies. Yeah, just, I just mean, for a joke. Yeah, he's for the, down for the content. He told me he's down for the grams. I appreciate you guys very much. <laughs> okay. is, this, is this a call to action? <laughs> uh, not, not yet. We'll kill Zach. We'll chop him up. Mm-hmm. And then we'll put, and then we'll we'll test it in different ways. We'll put some of his pieces in like a dryer, <laughs> and then we'll give that away. And then we'll put a few more of his pieces inside. Um, I don't know, like oh, a couch, kids playhouse, kids playhouse. Sure. And then we'll give that away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just just like grind <laughs> them up and put a pour them into the walls <laughs> oh of a kid's God. playhouse, and then for free. That's it. We, instead of a trunk of a car, we we just like pour his remains <laughs> into like the undercarriage of like a Barbie car, <laughs> like one of those little battery powered cars, and it just fucking stinks so bad. Free. <laughs> Oh, free st- runs, runs like this new. Cars free because it fucking stinks. <laughs> runs like new. Runs like new, but it smells real bad. Oh, basketball hoops! You know where you put the the water oh my in the God, bottom the base. Just grind up. That's a person. how you get rid of somebody. Mm-hmm. You grind them up into a liquid, <laughs> and you pour them into a basketball stand base. <laughs> it's a lot of work. And, and then you put free basketball stand. You, what could you be? You could be the the free something killer. Mm. Which is oh, a pretty cool name. Oh man, free, freebie killer. Ooh. Listen. We don't advocate serial killing here. Mm, no, we never have. We never have. But if you're going to do it, fucking put some panache in it. But do it with some style. <laughs> right. You know? I just give that shit away. Right. Just have a, have a funky calling card. Come on. I haven't heard of a serial killer like that. Just hiding hiding bodies and like um, <laughs> free giveaway stuff. Be the free giveaway person. And I'm not even going to feel- Free Freddy. And you know what? And, and if this were to happen, this episode will be out for a long time. If this happens a few years from now, it's not our fault. Because if somebody becomes that killer- they were going to be a killer anyway. We just gave them a better idea for their calling card. Sure. Everyone was still getting killed. <laughs> same people, same But everything. they were just going to be a boring ass fucking throw them in the woods. Just another run of the mill oh, serial killer. Another wooded uh, marshy bog. How clever. <laughs> another stab them and slice them. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so original. Oh, you got vats of acid in your basement. Seen it. <laughs> Been there. Okay, you hack. <laughs> oh, you cut a little puzzle fucking piece hacky out of ass puzzle killer. piece out of their skin. <laughs> We've seen it. Oh, you made a fucking lampshade out of their skin. <laughs> Been there, done that. Ed Gein, come on. <laughs> right, yeah. Put oh, some What's working to it. What's that, a nipple belt? Seen it. <laughs> Worn it. <laughs> Worn I mean, it. heard of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Been there, touched it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. So I like the, yeah, Freddie Freebie. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to kill some people, uh, that's one way to do it. <laughs> Uh, where are we going for One Star Heroes? We are going to Spirit Halloween Stores. <laughs> All right, let's go. I get no respect in real life. Always am upset. So I let them know I hate them. On the internet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so so I was thinking, um, as we're recording this, it's just following Halloween. We're hoping everybody had a good Halloween. It's been I know it's been a little bit now, but I was thinking about these spirit stores as a funny... I didn't even know if they would be on Yelp. I guess I wasn't surprised that they are, but it's just funny because they're pop-up stores. <laughs> and if for some reason you haven't heard of these spirit stores, they're everywhere. And, and the location varies because it'll be like a mall closes down or, uh, or a big box store <laughs> or closes a down. Lube. Or a Jiffy Lube. Whatever. <laughs> anything closes down and they're not going to lease it out to somebody right away. The fucking the, uh, the muckety mucks at Spirit Halloween are like, we'll take it for two months. <laughs> and you know that they get a cheap lease <laughs> and they just quickly throw up a bunch of um, uh, stands and stuff to, mm-hmm. to hang costumes on. Right. But it's like, it, it's basically like a, uh, a pop-up flea market. That only sells Halloween stuff. Mm-hmm. And so going into that, I would just think, of, like when I've gone and I have, I've bought plenty of costumes at Spirit Halloween stores. I never expect tip-top customer service. Uh, I don't expect exchanges or refunds because I know that it's like, it's the it's the big box equivalent of a dude on the side of the road selling fucking, you know, wolf blankets, <laughs> you know, and not out of wolves. If you're not familiar with this, around, like uh, blankets with like a picture of like a wolf howling at the moon oh, yeah, or a, a unicorn. Moon. A full moon. You ever seen a wolf? Three wolves on a fucking bluff. Yeah, you ever seen a full moon uh, or, a, or a wolf howling at a half moon? Mm-hmm. Right. Get the fuck no, out No, no, full moon. Full moon. Or, or like a bald eagle, you know, like uh, getting a rattlesnake or something. <laughs> it's like 
you'd have to be a lunatic to like buy one of those blankets and then come back to the guy selling them out of his fucking van the next day and be like, um, can I exchange this? Uh, no. Too small. He's Gary the van guy and he doesn't give a fuck about you or his exchange. He's if like, he, no, but do you want a rug? <laughs> right. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> What's it look like? Show, show me the rugs. How many of the one star reviews? Yeah. Because this is funny to me. Yeah. I, I haven't seen these. I haven't mm-hmm. looked through them and maybe you have. Yeah. How many people reviewed them, gave them one star for not being open like in uh, middle oh, of summer? Oh, oh, oh. None that I saw. No. So I, I know. I was hoping for that, that too. Been me. I was hoping for that too. Because some some funny guys, <laughs> funny guys walking around like in January, would be like fucking closed, terrible <laughs> hours, never open. <laughs> there was a surprising amount of people who came. Like you could tell they came on Halloween day, <sighs> and were upset that the store was in disarray. <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah, they don't give a fuck. Like these are these are temp these yeah, are temp they're, workers. They're closed tomorrow. Most of the people working they just, they just came from the temp <laughs> office. <laughs> they probably they probably quit today. Right. This is not a career job. Yeah. This is like okay, yeah, I'll fuck around <laughs> here for a few months. Uh, how funny would it be if well, you have a month employment at Spirit Halloween the benefits best any company's ever offered. Oh my God. For one fucking month, you better get yep. your teeth done. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have some some health concerns, go and get that checked out uh, because come November 1st, go fuck yourself. I'm picturing a college val- valedictorian <laughs> thanking fucking Spirit Halloween stores for at, the, at their acceptance speech or, or their graduation speech for paying for their four years <laughs> at like Yale or something. Spirit Halloween. I took, I took advantage of the Spirit Halloween <laughs> They employee have, college They fund. should have a scholarship. Oh <laughs> they, give out, they give it out and they only pay, pay for one month of your college tuition. That's pay, all you get. They'll pay for they'll pay for one month of an online technical school. <laughs> you get like DeVry or Phoenix or whatever. Like you, you'll get like a month. It's a plastic mask making online <laughs> online class. 3D printer. That's all they're going to pay for. <laughs> right, right. You only make the, the screen movie masks. <laughs> it's the specialty. So, okay. So look at these. I, I picked some in the LA area just because there would be more people, more traffic to, uh-huh. get, to get more reviews. And there was a whole bunch of them. I mean, this is the highest rated one. I'm actually, actually and this is the one in um, Marina Del Rey, 13450 Maxella Avenue. But I mean, that's where it was this one year. Who knows where it'll be in the future? <laughs> where to go? That's what's so great. They just <laughs> pop up wherever. Uh, <laughs> Which is how they, they can just dodge the Yelp reviews because they'll oh, yeah. not coming back. Yeah, this one, this one will never come back in this location again. <laughs> they'll move next door, right? And have a fresh, uh, clean slate. Leaving like Spirit Halloween, it's like it's like it's almost like leaving them reviews is like trying to review like a shady ass fucking carnival <laughs> right. that, that just like bounces around the country. The parking lots, right? Like shows uh-huh. up, yeah, exactly. Shows up in the fucking grocery store parking lot <laughs> for for three days. You've never heard of them before. You'll never see them again. <laughs> it's like it, what a waste of time to leave them a fucking Yelp review. <laughs> and no one going to those places is like, oh, I wonder what the reviews are. <laughs> Let's go check it out. It's a fucking grocery store parking lot carnival. God, I wonder it's how it's going to be terrible. How's the Ferris wheel going to be this year? <laughs> right. Oh shit. Right. Perfect. Like every year. <laughs> yeah, Great. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this one, 28 reviews, three and a half stars, which is uh, surprising because most of them are. David C. Mm. This 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 me. Okay, David C. And this was just recently, just a couple weeks ago, says, Spirit Halloween is very racist. Not even just racist. Very racist. Mm. It has a costume where you dress up as a Mexican. Very disrespectful. Spirit Halloween should address this and take those off the shelves. I haven't seen this costume. Huh. I am guessing they're referring to a costume of like a, or a mariachi band, mariachi band, like something something that is. I doubt the costume costume just says Mexican person. <laughs> like that's ridiculous. Yeah. No costume is gonna be like this is a Mexican person. Dress, do you want to dress up like a Mexican person? Because they all dress like this. <laughs> right. That's preposterous. Mm-hmm. It's like no somebody in a mariachi band, some kind of traditional costume, maybe the poncho, mm-hmm. the big sombrero with little tassels off it, something like that. And this whole thing that's been coming around like more in, the, in recent years of like cultural appropriation, be like, oh my God, you know, you're not of this race, so you shouldn't get to dress like that. It's so absurd and just illogical because uh, we actually, Lindsay and I had some people get mad at us. Not many, just a few people for dressing up in the Dios de los Muertos style because we're not Hispanic. And I immediately thought like, should I be upset when I see people dress up as Vikings? Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I have Scandinavian heritage. Should I be like, how dare did did your ancestors rape and pillage <laughs> the shores of Northern Europe? I no, doubt it. Then get off those fucking get those fucking horns off, my friend. <laughs> and and then it's like you can just keep taking it further mm-hmm. and further and further. You know, and I think about people dressing up as like the priest or like a nun. It's like, oh, are you Catholic? <laughs> is that right. is that a tribute to Catholicism? No. How very disrespectful. <laughs> Or people, and then you want to get even weirder, like a firefighter. Are you a firefighter? <laughs> Policeman. Are, do you know the firefighters risk their lives, police officers, and oh, you're just going to dress up as a joke uh-huh. for Halloween? How dare you? <laughs> right. It's just, it's so, so I, I, I'm guessing, don't know, I'm guessing David is one of these logical, overly emotional people. Must be. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I'm guess, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take it further. I'm gonna guess that David is white. I'm gonna guess that David is not Hispanic. And on behalf 
of uh, people who have never asked him to, to advocate an entire for them. Race. On behalf of an entire race, <laughs> who I doubt any member of that race has ever asked David, please advocate for us at the fucking <laughs> Spirit Halloweens. Please stop this tirade of racism at Spirit <laughs> Halloween. He's taken it upon himself I've, I've been to be a social justice warrior. I've been miserable for years. Why? <laughs> I've never been to Spirit Halloween. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that, that one, I'm just like, uh, it was just on my mind. I'm mm-hmm. like, come on, what are we doing here? Uh, this one is a long one. We don't have to read it all because it's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But 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 the first part is funny. That sounds just, like me reading the last article we were doing. I was like, man, we can, you got it. <laughs> no, but this is like, it's, it'd be painful to read every word of all. But it's oh, like, I believe you. Jamie J, uh, a couple years ago, one star. I'm a longtime customer of Spirit. <laughs> right, right off the back, it's like Spirit doesn't give a fuck <laughs> about customer loyalty. There's a fresh crop of fucking idiot ten year olds every year who want their goddamn Transformers costume. He has a punch card for Spirit <laughs> Halloween, and he <laughs> this is this is big year. He's gonna get uh, a, he's gonna get his tenth at a tenth right. uh, or tenth punches he needs on his car right. to get like a free candy bar, <laughs> right. and he's he's been holding on to that wrinkly yeah. ass fucking punch card. For a decade. I, I just love some people's perspective. Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Where you think that Spirit Halloween Co- Corporation is going to care about customer loyalty. <laughs> that is like that is like going to like uh, the roving flea market or something. <laughs> sure. And to get like a knockoff fucking Family Guy t-shirt. And you're like, listen, I've been getting knockoff t-shirts for five years. <laughs> yeah. And you're still going to show this callous disregard for my patronage? Yeah. <laughs> right. That's part of the deal at these places. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <I'm> fucking, <laughs> That's how it works. No one's getting into Spirit Halloween because it's like, man, I just, I just care about building customer appreciation. <laughs> this is, this is about community. This is about community. This is about growth. This is about loyalty. <laughs> no, it's about cheap ass Halloween costumes that are gonna fall apart probably halfway through trick or treating. <laughs> right. Uh, every year I take <laughs> this person's a maniac. Every year I take off work the day after Halloween. <laughs> Because everything is fifty percent off. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, so you're geez. like I got I got to call in sick today because it's day after Halloween. Everything's fifty percent off. I came to the spirit to find a very nasty manager named Kevin. As I was shopping, he walked by me, and his energy was very negative. Right away, I discounted the int- this this sen- these these first three sentences. I'm like I don't even care what happens after this. <sighs> what do you do? Is it mean? Doesn't, doesn't have to. His negative energy. Man. His energy man. is negative. His vibes. You're a loyal spirit customer. And you've been coming there. You take off work, and you've done it for over ten years. You're fucking crazy. <laughs> Kevin walks by, and he just gets so sad. It's like, oh, vibe bummer. <laughs> this Kevin guy. The whole rest of this thing is this long diatribe about how they wanted the uh, Twisty, which I believe from is, is the clown from American Horror Story. Okay, crazy looking clown, and and it was like a prop. It was like a, it wasn't um, a costume. It was like part of a display. Oh yeah, okay. And everything's fifty percent off. They wanted the display item, which I think usually the company does take. To then reuse the next Halloween or May, but anyway, uh, the manager didn't want them didn't want to give the fifty percent discount to that big display item. Everything else, fine, fifty percent off, but not that. And they were so just horrified that they just left a big pile of other things at the cash register. It will never be coming back. Oh boy, mm-hmm. Kevin cares. Ke- and Kevin, yeah, exactly. What I love about this is like this whole thing about Kevin. Kevin fucking, uh, he, he didn't remember 30 seconds after you talking to them, he'd forgotten who you were. <laughs> Kevin's already on to the next thing in his mind. Look, I, I could call somebody, not going to. Not going to. Because <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm, I quit after today. And there is, and there, I'm literally <laughs> gone forever in three hours. <laughs> of course, I'm not going to do anything. There is a very steady theme throughout all these Halloween reviews of mm-hmm. poor customer service and poor management. And again, I'm like, of course there is. <laughs> Why would you expect? Be anything. realistic. <laughs> I like the idea of a five star. Spirit right. Halloween. Oh my God. Everyone there, <laughs> they welcomed me when I came in. Tuxedos. Mm-hmm. They, they, rolled, have, they have food samples on golden platters. There was a red carpet. As you walk around. <laughs> they, helped, they helped take my costumes to my car. No. <laughs> you're you're lucky if they say hi to you. <laughs> that'd be fucking awesome, though. <laughs> right? That would be awesome. <laughs> Just take some, That'd be great. That's the whole... I, I love that business model. Take things that you're, you're used to being super shitty right. and go completely the other direction. You're like, uh-huh. what the fuck? What? Like you walk into like a, a Domino's and there's like someone to seat you now. There's a, <gasps> like a hostess. It's like perfect lighting, Every, right? Fan, Chinese chi, mm-hmm. uh, China silverware and, and and bowls and plates everywhere, and you're like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> come pour, come pour your drinks. Mm-hmm. Everyone has an accent. Oh my god, white gloves. You're that, like, oh, this is fucking weird. That would be so great at Domino's. That'd be a great sketch just to like mess with people's minds. <laughs> uh-huh. What is happening? Hidden camera. Uh-huh. Okay, this one's a uh, three out of five, which again is high. This is in Pasadena, uh, and this is Justin Y, who, w- one star, worst management I seen of enforcing customers wearing masks in any business. Uh, this happened around 7.30 p.m. yesterday, right after the door was someone... Oh, boy. Right right at the door was someone not wearing then the middle of the store, another near the counter. Amelia, worst attitude ever. 
terrible customer service from this person. Rather be on phone on her AirPods than to help someone. If it wasn't for Vanessa, we would have walked out of the store and not purchased a thing. So friendly, kind, and helpful. Still giving one star for terrible experience provided by Amelia and the mask situation. The mask thing, again, here's the thing. When people sign up to work at Spirit, what they don't sign up to do is enforce security. Right. They're not going to risk getting in a fucking confrontation where somebody could punch them in the face over a mass disagreement because it's fucking spirit. <laughs> if you go into spirit thinking like, oh, I bet everybody's following the rules here and all the safety <laughs> protocols are being taken. Like, you're lucky like the fucking, the box cutters aren't just laying where kids could grab them. <laughs> you're lucky the fucking door opened. Right. You're lucky. You're lucky there's a fucking roof on the building. <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky you didn't have to go through a dog door to get into the fucking building. You should be the spirit. <laughs> spirit Spirit is like the box store equivalent of a dude selling you fucking knockoff purses in an alley. <laughs> like, like, or, or like buying switch It's going to be blades. fine. <laughs> it's not going to be great. Okay? That's it. That's their motto. <laughs> Spirit Halloween. Going to be fine. Never never great. Spirit Halloween. Okay. <laughs> right. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Whatever. Happy Halloween or whatever. <laughs> Happy Halloween. See you next year. Probably somewhere else though. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan D. Uh, one star, go here only if you want to get angry. Rude and dumb employees who seem as though they were given a list of arbitrary rules and have nothing in mind, like helping you buy something to support their two months worth of pay other than vigilant enforcement. What a joke of a business. And again, Ryan, fucking calm down. <laughs> I, I love you. Like You should be thankful that I'm supporting your two months worth of pay. <laughs> Stop it. Fucking uh, calm down. Did they get commission there? Doubt no, I, doubt. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know the business model. If they do, if they're not, yeah, they're not trying very hard. No. No one's helped me when I go into Spirit Halloween. I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think they're getting commission. <laughs> they, they don't think so either. I, uh, this is, this is uh, this, okay, this last one. This is more typical of a typical uh, Spirit Halloween store. One and a half stars <laughs> out of go. five. There we go. And this is one in, okay, Burbank, San Fernando. Uh, Chloe, Chloe M. Most absurd return policy ever. Don't even have changing rooms. Boy, you have high expectations for spirit. Don't even have changing rooms to try something on. And they told me to basically strip and try the stuff in the middle of the store if I wanted to try something on. They did not basically tell you that. They didn't do that. Take your fucking clothes. <laughs> Take your fucking clothes. Come on, Chloe. Where? Try it on right here. Do it right here. Dance for me. <laughs> do a little dance. Or maybe they did. Do a twirl. Maybe they did. Maybe the Chloe person like just fucking left prison. <laughs> and, and he's like, maybe spirit is just like, uh, yeah, if you want to work here, there's, you don't have to fill out a form. <laughs> Spirit Halloween has somehow found a way to get to the exit part of the prison. So on your way out of prison, you walk through a Spirit Halloween. <laughs> and that's how they make their money. That's how they make hey, Everyone's he, getting out. The guy's been there for 30 years and he comes out in a fucking Frankenstein costume. If you, if you want to make, yeah, you, they, they offer that to you when you're uh, exiting prison. Like they have a costume you can put on. If you want to make a few bucks before you catch your bus, there's a Spirit Halloween right as you exit the prison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> I you love it. You I your, would go to that one. You haven't seen your dad in 25 years and he comes out dressed as Chucky <laughs> from prison with a fake knife and just he's waiting like, on the like, waiting by the bus stop. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I asked, now, I love how absurd she's being here. Chloe goes, I asked if I could run home and try on the three outfits I was going to buy. No store would let you do that. Hey, do you care if I take all these outfits home? And try them on. I promise I'll come back and pay. You know me. You know me. I'm Chloe. <laughs> uh, I was going to make sure the size I chose fit. They said no. Yeah, of course it. <laughs> if you're going to offer a no return policy, then add some changing rooms for people to try these already ridiculously overpriced cheap garments. Never buying from Spirit again. Chloe, you need to go to a different store. <laughs> you need to understand expectations. Sure. I love this thing of like, we need to get some change. No, they don't. <laughs> this had to been the first Spirit she's ever gone into. Right. What the you would know. <laughs> it could have zero out of five stars every single review. <laughs> and next year, it's going to be the same shit. And you know what I've noticed a lot of these places complain about is how packed it is. Yep. They don't have to give a fuck about you and they won't. And they will pack out every year uh -huh. because they're going to have the most Halloween fucking trinkety shit Stop. every year. Yes. Yep. Uh, two more. Quick one from Kenya. Kenya E. I thought this was an absurd uh, evaluation. One star. I'm only writing this review because of one employee. She has very short hair and it's light greenish. She's rude. And I genuinely didn't feel like being there anymore and left without buying anything. She has a terrible attitude and isn't helpful at all. The rest were nice and respectful. <laughs> that don't give the whole store one star. What? Why are you doing that? Everyone was great. I, everyone was <laughs> wonderful and I had a fantastic time. I didn't like the way Pam looked at me. One star. How mean, how mean would this lady have to be? Right. The, you, just say, you walk in, she goes, mm -hmm. fucking ugly bitch. Hey, like, uh, we got an ugly bitch <laughs> needs help in the front. Ugly I, bitch. I don't do ugly bitch looking at wigs. We got some ugly bitch wanting its costume. <laughs> <laughs> 
And everybody sorry, else is like, I'm so sorry. Me, I'm so sorry. She's so terrible. <laughs> right. We're, we're so sorry she does this. It's, you ask that employee a question. Yeah. She goes, oh, sorry, I don't speak fucking stupid. Right. Like, no no one, what? How, what did you I do? I don't help ugly customers. Next. <laughs> With a face push? Yeah, fucking pushes your face shoves out. Her, shoves her back into the spider webs. Welcome to spirit, bitch. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like a little trip, back, back leg sweep. <laughs> Shove you into the twisty clown that's on, de- on display. You know, she lands on the pad and sets off the little <laughs> demo of the of the you know the decoration. Oh yeah, it starts to move <laughs> and the spider lunges at you. Okay, so Kenya, if everyone else is great, one person's bad, maybe maybe don't have to leave a review. Like okay, that. yeah, I agree. Now this last one is the one. This is uh, the anchor. This is my favorite one. This is okay. Nicole M up in Burbank. She doesn't know what misogynistic means, <laughs> but she tries to use it quite a few times here in this uh, review. Not good for her. Confidence. And, and I'm not adding accent here. She writes these words the way I'm saying them, just so you know. So in regards to your staff, I had an encounter with one very tall mis- uh, misogynistic man-child. First of all, he was watching me the entire time, which you're going to find out is his job. Second, wasn't wearing staff attire, probably just to blend in. Uh, I get it, to catch people stealing or whatever. So one can assume he doesn't even work there since he's wearing a hoodie and shorts. Exactly. Hmm. Your staff member approached me aggressively and accused me of opening one of the costume bags. He was watching me the entire time, saw me struggling to get the bag down, which was already open. So I was trying to close it. I kept walking and he stopped me telling me, excuse me, you can't open the costume. I was like, okay, wait, you don't work here. I tried to walk away and he got upset and aggressively changed his tone. He was accusing me of opening the bag and saw me, quote, tampering with it. Girl, I was trying to close it. So many exclamation points. It was open. He stood there and argued with me. (laughs) <laughs> then shared that if I had an issue, I could talk to his manager, who was even more mean than him. Like, what? Why would I say that? I didn't do anything. So I told him, you saw me. She's mad. <laughs> she can't let this go. I knew you were watching me. Uh, did I take anything out? No. Did I open it? No. It was already open. What don't you get? He said he had to make sure he was doing his job or he could lose it. Clearly, he needs to learn how to communicate, which I gave his misogynistic self examples of how to do that instead of accusing someone. If it wasn't for the other staff member stepping in, we would have continued in this hostile moment. I'm sorry to the staff member. You did great, by the way, at conflict resolution. And I'm sorry if I was being re- rude to you and projecting my negative energy. I get it. He doesn't want to be there. But girl, check in with yourself before coming into work so you aren't as upset with everyone else and don't accuse a 5'5 woman who literally did nothing. <laughs> a couple problems I had with this. It was only misogynistic twice. Mm-hmm. But then you never back it up with examples of like, misogynistic would be like, he doesn't like women. Mm-hmm. And he's picking on you because you're a woman. You never make that clear nope. in your review. You just make it clear that he's doing his job. You made it clear that you're a woman. You made it clear that you're a woman. <laughs> That's what you got, yeah. <laughs> and you made it clear that the whole disagreement was, you thought it was already open. Says you, He thought you were opening it with it. And he just said, like, you're not supposed to open stuff. Mm. And I'm guessing, based on the way you wrote this, you probably had a little attitude when you came back at him. And then I love this. What does 5-5 five, five have to do with anything? It, it, it's like part of that misogynistic. To me, this is someone projecting some weird shit in their head on people around them in the world. Yeah, like, I mean... Oh, you're mad at me? I guess it's because I'm a 5-5 five, five woman. <laughs> right. No, it's just because you're being a bitch. <laughs> yeah. That's that's Big, a personal huge, thing that you, difference. you chose to do. It has nothing to do... You're just being a fucking dickhead. <laughs> Doesn't have to do anything with your gender or your height. Let, let, let's uh, All the stuff you said, let's rewind mm-hmm. it back to the part where you're an asshole. Because <laughs> that's what this is about. Right. I don't care how tall you are. Yep. Your sex. Mm-hmm. Uh, none of that. Just quit opening my products. Thank you. And I do think about that sometimes when people blame like negative interactions on like, oh, I guess it's because of uh, my, my whatever. Uh, I'm a woman or I'm a dude. You can take it anyway. I'm blonde a dude. Hair. I have a blonde hair. Uh, my race, whatever. I'm, I'm always like. My chest hair. Is it because of your race or gender or whatever? Or are you just a dick? <laughs> and your whole life you've been like, you become more of a dick because you never have to take personal responsibility because you consistently just blame it like, well, I guess it's because I'm a redhead. Uh-huh. Nope. You're a fucking dickhead. Right. That is why people don't like you. <laughs> Not because of the way you're born looking. It's because of the way you choose to act in various situations. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, again, I don't, I don't know this person, but mm, reading this, I'm like, I think the problem's Nicole. Expectations a little too high. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then whoever the fuck yeah. told her that she needs to put two periods before every exclamation mark, uh, period, exclamation mark, and question mark. <laughs> that shit drove me insane. Yeah, the ex- every every single sentence would have like two periods oh, yeah. and then the exclamation mark. You're right. And um and that sucks. So I, I would have yelled at her just for that. Just for punctuation. Mm-hmm. Stop putting extra periods in there. Which I mean, you can call me misogynistic, You're misogynistic. if you want. You yeah. Fucking misogynistic <laughs> grammar fucking Nazi. Thinking women, extra are, thinking women are dumb. It's like, no, no, no. You're just dumb. 
<laughs> and I can see it but by the way you write. That is something that's been a pet peeve of mine, though, for so many years. Because I've met people who are like, uh, and I've been in the interaction with them. Uh, one person uh, consistently, it was like, okay, he's a black man, and we would be in a you know area together, and I would see him be such a dick. Okay, to like let's say a waiter. And then he would gossip to me or, you know, gossip, complain to me afterwards. He's like, well, you know, this is what it's like. And it's fucking racist. And I, I was younger <laughs> and I didn't want to like say anything. I'm like, oh, I don't want to open this can of worms. Right. But, but in my head, I just kept thinking like, I don't think that was because you're black. I think that was because you were an asshole. <laughs> right. Like I was uncomfortable about how much of an asshole you were being during that interaction. And then when he finally gave attitude back, I thought like, yeah. Of course, that's why that's, he's a human being. You're a human <laughs> being, and he didn't like the way you were treating him. Hmm. But I'm like, and then, and I did stop uh, being friends with this person because, like, they probably for a variety of reasons, but they got progressively like more rude in situations, and they would blame that more on in this example, like their race, and it became this terrible cycle where like you're becoming worse and worse of a human because you think the world is out to get you, and it's like. No, you're you're a dickhead, <laughs> and 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 the more you think this, the more of a dickhead you become, because everyone, you know, myself included, to be fair, at the time is too afraid to be like, it's not because you're black, right? It's because you're an asshole. Yeah, you're just being an asshole. You're an asshole. Mm -hmm. The way you talk to people. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I, I hear you. Ah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Ichiwawa. Ichiwawa. Uh, all of that bad news. Yeah. You want to look at good news? I like good news. We save that for Sliver of Hope. Let's do it. Okay. Sliver of Hope. cute story let's get hopeful you ready to get cute let's get cute boy let's get cute four years old okay dials 111 <laughs> so you okay. know it's uk 111 invites uh, police to see his toys oh is that the uh, emergency number in the uk 111 uh, suppo yeah supposedly that's what it is okay uh, i did not know that but now i do so when a four-year-old boy in the lower south isle island dials 111 by mistake uh then when it, you know wanted to invite police to visit him to see his toys police took him up on the offer and I'm going to play the call here in just a second. So, Lower South Island, where mm -hmm. is this? Southern District Police posted audio of a call on their Facebook page. The post ends with a picture of a happy boy sitting on the bonnet of a police car, a uh, police cap on his head. What's a bonnet? Okay, the hood. So the hood, yeah. See this little, this cute nice. little guy? So we're going to hop over here and just take a listen to the phone call. Oh, okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay, oh, New Zealand. Go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. Play Friday. <laughs> yes, what's going on? Um, can I tell you something? You can tell me something. I got some toys for you. You got some toys for me? Yep, come you over and see them. Where about are you? See you. Sorry? <laughs> scuffle, Hello? scuffle. Hi there, we've received a 111 call. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm guessing it was a mistake, child making a mistake there. Yeah, yeah, he's asking oh. off for his mother's son. Oh, bless him. So just confirming there's no emergency at all? No, there's not. Oh, awesome. Said, um, I was fixing the other child. No problem at all. He was lunch. just talking about his toys. That's no problem at all. You guys have a good rest of your day. And then watch. Here we go. So okay. here she's reaching out. Com schools for any units free to edit. There is a four-year-old there who is wanting to show police their toys. So. Aww. Yeah, I want to hold him to. Roger, thank you. <laughs> So the officer went over and checked out the, the kids' I love, toys. I love that they followed up with like, yeah, if, you, if you're free, some officer free, go over there and check out this kid's toys. Right. And it says he has some cool toys, and again, he just shows the picture again. Uh, but how, how cute is that? And, I, and, I, and I'm sorry, I looked it up. I didn't, even, yeah. I didn't even notice that it said New Zealand Police on the Facebook page. Oh, yeah. When I looked up 111, it said it was UK. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's similar, it's yeah. Totally yeah, so I'm not sure how that, how that uh, I guess it's used mm. in different places as well. My geography brain was like, where is South uh, Island? I but know. it makes sense. South Island, makes sense. Yeah, the big New Zealand. Because it didn't make sense to me either. When I looked it up, it was like, UK, one, one, one. I love, I love that accent, by the way. Um, like favorite accents, it's like you know, like Australia, New Zealand, like, you know, uh, some various ones in, in the UK, South Africa. But New Zealand, it might, it might be my favorite of the bunch. South Africa and New Zealand have such pleasant accents. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, oh, I just want to hear you keep talking. <laughs> just what, Hello, how whatever. you doing, love? Like, you could be getting booked into prison. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, this, is, this isn't Thank so you. bad. <laughs> just uh, put your hands there. Let me put the handcuffs on them. Okay. <laughs> you yeah, betcha. You Gosh dang. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you a few questions. You're going to have to answer me uh, if you want a lawyer. Brother. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Did you kill your, did you kill your wife? Yeah, of sure. I guess I did. I did. <laughs> if you say so. You start confessing things you didn't even do. <laughs> I mean, what do, you, what do you want? What do you want me to say? What, I don't want, what, listen, I don't want to disappoint you. What's easiest for you? What's it, what, what makes your job easiest? <laughs> well, I mean, I would like to solve this case. Then yeah, I did it. <laughs> 
I'm, try, I'm trying like to see my family. Oh, this, fine, I get it. Fine, it is. I get it. I killed him. I killed yeah. Him. Everybody who's in here, whoever I killed, it. I killed it. I killed them all. Let them all go. <laughs> Whatever's easiest, man. I'll be the only one in here. Right. I don't care. I don't care. You're so sweet. Gosh dang. Gosh dang. What's for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the thing I found on the internet this week, maybe my uh, my easily my favorite in a while, or favorite in a while. Okay. And maybe favorite of all time. This was sent in by a, a dummy, so okay. we're going to check it out here. Zach, play the thing! The internet has all sorts of neat things. I am! Anything you want can be yours. Let's take a peek, together, as a couple. To you, from internet. Hi. Hello. Did you know that there's something called extreme ironing? Nope. Are you ready to learn about it? Extreme ironing. This was sent in by dummy Ryan. And it's an insane sport that you probably never knew about. What? It's Is this very- real? Yes. This is not Photoshop? Uh, nope. Because I'm going to go through about 10 billion photos, and you're going to see what, what I'm fuck? talking about. Uh, so, if you haven't picked up on what it is, extreme ironing is a sport in which people take ironing boards to remote locations, and then they have ironing items that like clothing or whatever they are, and then they basically just start ironing them. Okay. So, and and whatever it may be. And again, you can find this uh, in the description. I will link to the extreme ironing. But they have a, a book called yeah. Extreme Ironing 101 that tells you how to go about it. But we're going to take a look at some of the images here, and we'll describe them as we go through. So here's some skydivers, uh, three of them. They're okay. holding an ironing board, and their ironing looks, looks like, a, like a T-shirt of some mm-hmm, sort. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we're going to go down a little further. Here's a guy diving with sharks. He's what? at the bottom of the ocean with an ironing board, uh, <laughs> ironing some stuff. Okay. Here's a guy on the top of a car. Looks like a hearse. <laughs> Why is this, a, this is so weird? I know. And then here's some guys at war. Uh, looks like not a very safe place, but they're ironing uh, their fatigues on an ironing <laughs> board behind a guy that's uh, providing cover fire. So that's safe. Uh, here's some guys on a, <laughs> on a boat. Yeah, like what one of those bayou, the, like yeah. one of those like uh, wind oh, boat. Shit. What are they called? I don't know, but they use them in swamps and I stuff. Know, they have I'm, a big fan coming off the back. So it's hover like, boat. Yeah, it's, it's like so you can go in really shallow water. Yeah, I've yeah. been on one. Anyway, they got an ironing on there. Here's a guy on a roof. Uh, here's a guy riding a horse. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, here's a guy standing in ice uh, up to his. You know, he's standing in frigid water. Yeah, uh, doing some ironing. Here's a guy driving a go kart. He's, he's ironing. Uh, middle of the grocery store on a canoe, uh, handstand on top of a waterfall. Uh, in a hot tub. How long ago? <laughs> how long ago was this? Like, when did this trend? I don't know. Uh, windsurfing. <laughs> what? How funny is this, dude? That's the weirdest. Oh, I love it. I love weird shit like this, and this is what the internet is all about. Yes, I love the effort people went through just to get that photo. Makes so, me want to do I it. Wonder, I wonder if that was uh, were they raising money or something, or was I just a it. goofy thing I'm, to do? I'm guessing it's just a funny thing to do. Just a funny thing to do <laughs> to take something like ironing and then apply it to extreme sports. And that's why I it's love so that funny. it caught on, and other people were like, "Oh man, let's get a picture of us ironing on this." Let's I, get a picture of us ironing I'd on love this. To do, I'm already thinking about uh, how I can bring it snowboarding with me. I w- yeah, I was. Oh my god, going through powder and just running my my iron off to the side as I'm blasting through. How much fun would that, that be? That would be an amazing sitting on a chairlift, okay. even ironing some shit. If you want to get like a viral video, <laughs> if you're flying down the hill, I don't know if you get like GoPro so you can like record it too. And, and uh, oh man, you I think to, someone would have to just follow me and watch yep, me. Somebody have to like get, get reactions of people. But mm-hmm. if you're just zipping past people down the mountain and you're <laughs> ironing like on your snowboard, that's pretty badass. It could be on its own snowboard, and then it's just right, could right you next do that? to you. Yeah, I could do it. I could that's I could crazy. steer that thing around. That's crazy. <laughs> That'd be so much fun. <laughs> so anyway, all the uh, the link for extreme ironing uh, in the episode description. Okay, want to hear from some dummies? Yeah, let's do it. Zach, thanks. Bye. <laughs> First story, short story. Short story. Sent in by Dummy Craig, who writes, Hello, dummies. I was watching the most recent episode of Is We Dumb? Remodel professional listener VHS door handle. (laughs) Well, I have my own swinging door kicking the door open story. I was working at a fast food restaurant, and the door to the kitchen section is a polished silver silver door that swings both ways, has the small circle window at head level. I think we can Mm -hmm, all uh, mm -hmm. picture that door. It was closing time, and I was bringing some dirty dishes to the kitchen, and I used my foot to kick open the door since my hands were full. Uh, There was an elite-level dummy behind the door staring out the window into the dining space. Well, I kicked the door like I was Gerald Butler in 300 and smashed the door into the guy's (laughs) face. He suffered a broken nose, swollen face. No one blamed me, and the whole store learned to not stand in front of the door or behind the door Mm -hmm. uh, because someone could fucking boot it open. I listened to all of your Is We Dumb episodes. Been a longtime fan of dance comedy. Thanks for keeping me entertained during my week and helping me be less dumb. Sincerely, your loyal dummy, Craig R. Johnson. Craig R. Johnson. Kicking the doors. Always a risk. Mm-hmm. Always a risk when you kick the doors hard like that. Every single time I go into a gas station. You want to kick those doors. 
every time. Mm-hmm. I want it to be a game so bad. Mm-hmm. Just uh, that would be so fun. I would, it would be. I would. They could have a, a viewing area. Like I could go in there. I could get my items. I could mm-hmm. pay for them, or maybe not yet. Yeah. Maybe I just want. I guess have a little seat. Yeah. And sit down by the uh, burritos, hot dogs. Speaking <laughs> of Zach, and then we'll just take a look back at the door, and then you can see <sighs> if anyone beats your high score that day. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that that's is fun. a fun fucking gas station. Mm-hmm. Screw uh, you, by the way. <laughs> oh come on! I was thinking of uh, what, what is that? Is, is going to drive me crazy in in the three hundred? What he's talking about, Gerard Butler taking that door. This is Sparta. That's what it is. That's the one. I, I always confuse that scene with the tonight we dine in hell, but that happens later on mm. when they're getting ready for the battle. But when he actually kicks the guy into the well, that's when he screams, "This is Sparta!" Mm-hmm. God, that's a good movie. <laughs> it is. Gerard Butler's a badass. The in that visual movie. effects. When that oh. movie came out, still hold up today. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, you can see the blood and everything. It's like was graphic like, novel stylized, was super added later, and it looks super fake now. Like the blood squirts and stuff. If you really look at it, you're like, oh man, like it was all just added later. Was that a Frank Miller like Sin City? Uh, no, yeah, it was. Is, is, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain. I don't know for sure, but that sounds very, very. Uh, you can look it up. Well, you do the next thing. I'm gonna look it up because I think it was because like it reminded me like Sin City. Came exactly. Out before, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it, it looked great. Uh, our final piece of junk mail for, these, uh, for this week coming in from Dummy Corey, who writes, Hey, Jan and Doe. <laughs> Dyslexia is fun, isn't it? Longtime listener, first time caller here. Love the shit out of you guys. Gross. I've always laughed quietly to myself while listening to or reading funny shit at work, but after reading or finding this podcast, it's turned into a full out cry laughing at my desk. It's gotten so bad, <laughs> I consistently have co workers coming to check if I'm okay or if I'm really having a mental break. I appreciate all that you guys do. So, anywho. That's awesome. Uh huh. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm writing in because I was listening to Rectum Silver Metal Taxi Puppy Kick. <laughs> And the story of the man who shoved an eel up his ass to cure his, cancer, uh, cure his constipation. Well, <laughs> it shook loose a memory from work about six or seven years ago that I thought you guys would enjoy, so here it is. A few of us were standing, standing around shooting the shit, and one of the guys were talking about uh, a wart on his hand that he'd been trying to remove with some uh, at-home medication, mm-hmm. one kind of or another. Apparently, uh, it had been going on, uh, you know, apparently it hadn't been going well, and he was running out of ideas. Then out of nowhere, this kid walking by, who's probably 21 or 22 years of old, he, uh, t- years old, he pipes up, in all seriousness, this is what he says. He goes, oh, it's a wart? Oh, it's easy to fix. He's got to steal a dish from your mom, or a dish rag from your mom, and then bury it in your grandma's garden. What? Right. Which almost, and I'll explain more later, because I, I think I like this kid. Because that sounds like something I would fucking say to some right. coworkers, yep. and then just move on mm-hmm, about mm-hmm. my day. Just be random. All of, all six of us were just deadpanned, staring at him silently for a good 30 seconds to see if he was kidding. He was not. So that's when the heckling started. Followed by about a thousand questions you'd imagine would come from a rational human trying to figure out what the medical advice would be in all of that that he just said. Right. He said, so if your grandma doesn't have a garden, what do you do? (laughs) Does it have to be a dirty dish rag? What if the dog digs it up? Does the wart come back? What if my mom is dead? Whose dish rag should I steal then? Does it have to be used on dishes or can it be in a, like a bathroom wash rag? Uh, he was 100% adamant that it would work if we just tried it. So we uh, we did what any group of people in the situation would do. We made a bet with them for a case of beer uh, on whether it worked or not. And then I'll let you guys guess who won. I'm guessing they had a free case of beer. Yep. Uh, he said, but it's true. They walk among us. I'm not sure we ever got around to figuring out uh, how his family... or how his family tree has that many branches, but <laughs> especially with the, med- uh, the medical advice like that. But he was, last I heard, not dead yet, which is a miracle. Okay. Right. My friend did get his wart taken care of, uh, which was, I was most concerned about reading the story. I was like, okay. <laughs> is but, the wart But, but there? did you fucking take care of the wart? Right. Uh, but I didn't have anything to do with dish rags or gardening. Anyway, huh. thanks for letting me share this ridiculous story. Hopefully you'll find it as funny as I did. And I'm sure you'll have as many questions as we did. I don't at all apologize for the length message. So stick it in your juice box and suck it. Ah. As always, three out of five stars. Wouldn't change a the- uh, thing. Dummy, Corey. Thank you, Corey. I know. But that, I, I think I do like that guy. The, the guy who gave the dish rag in the garden? By, goes, what? Because I, I defaulted back, and I haven't talked about this for a while yeah. uh, on the show, but I did mention it at one point where I did find it funny, and I did do this myself. I'd go onto medical forums, mm-hmm. and I, like, oh, online, yes. and I made doctor, and I had, it was like Dr. Miller or something sure, like that. Sure, And I would write in things that almost sounded like they were, like, true. Right. Like, if your ear aches, then, like, grind up some beets and then rub the beet juice in your earlobe, and right. that should help you out. And it's just the, just the, the joy of knowing that people took toothpaste and then rubbed it on their butthole <laughs> to try and like stop hemorrhoids. That makes me happy. Because there is those old folklore right. things that are like that. Exactly. That's that why that I would crazy. do it. Mm-hmm. So this reminds you of that. You go, oh, fuck, a wart? Easy. 
go bury a dish rag in your grandma's garden. This all reminds me of that meme Duh. of like, uh, it looks like you have um, ghosts in your blood. Ghosts in your blood. I uh, like, like prescribe you cocaine for your <laughs> right. ghosts in your blood. Right, kind of exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do, some, do some cocaine about it. Uh, the um, the sorry, no one cares but me. But I the, care but, about you. But the Frank Miller thing, yes. Uh, Sin City was. Produced and directed by Frank Miller and Robert Rodriguez. Oh, he's awesome. Also, Rodriguez, like the grindhouse guy. Oh, yeah. But uh, it was a graphic novel uh, that it was based on. I think it was like Frank Miller's graphic novel. And then the 300 was a graphic novel by Frank Miller that then Zack Snyder. Oh, that's right. Uh, did. But it was, you know, Frank, Frank, Frank Miller was consulting. Right. Yeah. But God, oh, sorry. It's such good movies. Now I want to watch both of them again. I know. I haven't seen 300 in a long time. Yeah, me either. <laughs> the, the Igor guy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Up in the mountain? Yep. And the, the traitor. He's always out of breath. God, yep, they wouldn't let him fight. Well, that, he, I, was, I mean, he was a traitor, but they were also fucking dicks. They were mean to him. They were mean to him. So that's where... They should have let him fight. See? Yep, you gotta let... I'm going with this. The, there's a strong moral lesson in the movie 300. Don't if, be a dickhead. If a hunchback guy wants to fight on your team, you should let him. Because mm -hmm. you might be a good fighter. And it's kind of mean not to. I think that's moral. That's a great model for life. That's a great model for life. If, every every if, situation. If somebody... A grotesque hunchback guy <laughs> who, who has really nothing to add to your team wants to play for your team, you should probably let him. You should let him. Or he's going to find a way to... like. Or, he's gonna, or you're going to die. <laughs> or you and all your friends are going to die. That's the message from that. <laughs> if somebody... <laughs> if a medieval hunchback guy wants to fight on your team, mm -hmm. you have to let him. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, you and all your friends are dead. Period. Period. That's all that that's, they wrote in the, like, the, they're pitching this screenplay, and that's the, that's the cover. They're like, what? Huh? <laughs> What's that, that's the moral here? What's the movie about? Well, well <laughs> it's about some guys who don't let a hunchback guy fight for them, and they all die because of that. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's a good, uh, it's a good moral. Intriguing. Yeah, okay. Tell me, tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> We're going to need a little more than that. Hunchback and Notre Dame? And Gerard no. Butler <laughs> is ripped and has his shirt off. Uh, listening. <laughs> listening. Interest more peeps. A little more. <laughs> is there blood? Yeah, a lot of it. A lot of it. So much blood. Yes, sex. Oh, yes. Okay. Boobs. Yes. A lot of hot boobs. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm so in. we're going to overlook the first part of the pitch, <laughs> and we're going to focus on the rest. He's like, uh, sequel to Hunchback and Notre Dame? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no. This is different. <laughs> okay. 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 Tell me more. Hey, Zach. Mm -hmm. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Zach Flannery producing and directing today. Zach Cohen. Some of the custom music beds for the show. Thank you so much. Logan Keith, you can check out the merch that's uh, dropped for Is We Dumb at badmagicmerch.com or iswedumb.com. We have that brand new challenge coin representing all three cornerstone shows here at Bad Magic Productions available right now. Limited qualities, <laughs> as we said earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, quantities available right now. Uh, so go grab it right now. Go, go pick it up and yep. support all the shows. Get yourself a challenge coin. Get, it, get one. Do it. Want to follow us online? You can or just don't. Instagram oh. and Facebook at Is We Dumb. Every post we uh, we throw up there, we always make sure to check for shoes. Yep. Because mm -hmm. we don't want anyone to get hurt. Nope. Or burn their house down. Private Facebook group Is We Dummies, moderated by Liz Hernandez and the All Seeing Eyes. Then go to YouTube if you want to watch this show or any of the shows. Just search for Bad Magic Productions on the uh, on the YouTubes. Mm -hmm. and, and before we move on to the very last little button of the show, I just want to give our own moral message from this episode. <laughs> right. and, I, and I want to stress this is like, if you took nothing else away, this is very important. All right. If you are, if you are dating uh, Siamese twins and they have one pussy that they share, you have to get con consent from both heads. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Our lawyers are rejoicing. Rejoicing. <laughs> I just didn't want anybody to, you know, miss that message and I, all the jokes. I heard all all lawyers clapping mm -hmm. out there. They're like, thank God. I Sh they shut their briefcases mm -hmm. and they're they're out of here. Another Sh successful show. Shared pussies require multiple consents. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Always have. Always will. You gotta let the hunchback fight for you, and you gotta ask more than one lady if it's okay to stick your dick in a hole that's shared by more than one person. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to say that at dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. That's going to be my, uh, like, the, the dear, dear blessing. Heavenly, dear Heavenly Father, please let us always ask for permission from more than one people if we're sticking our dicks in shared pussies. And I like hunchbacks. Let's eat. <laughs> Let's eat. Amen, Amen Daddy. <laughs> Pass the corn. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> uh, okay. I have a okay. neat fact for you this week. Okay. It's going to hopefully it blows your mind. Zach, did the thing. Wow. Neat fact. I didn't know this. Huh. I hope you don't either. Okay. But I'm going to make you test it. Did you know your foot is the same size as your forearm? So look at your forearm. Hmm. Doesn't that look like a giant foot? I guess just from wrist yep. to elbow, not counting hand. That does look like a big foot. Put it up to your foot. Or, yeah, put your foot up there. Oh, man, I'm not very flexible. Can you kick it up on your other leg? Maybe. A little cross? Oh, God. 
Yeah. Look at that. Boom. Isn't that... It fits. It fits. It fits. It always fits. Impressive. I know. It looks way too big. It does. That's what she said. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> and dad joke at the end. See you next week. It's week time. Magic Productions.